I, well, I did my undergraduate at uh, McGill University and there was a professor there who I met named uh, Dr. Kelly O'Clair. And she was in the chemistry department and her research was actually on trying to come up with ways to degrade plastics and like plastic fibers that are commonly used. And it's a really fascinating problem and a really difficult problem because plastics uh, aren't made to be degraded. They're made to last a long time. That is like their product purpose. Uh, and so this is something that's important to think about when it comes to looking at alternatives to plastics is that uh, what uh, Dr. O'Clair's group was trying to promote is when we look into alternatives like um, biosynthetic fibers, which are maybe uh, more uh, compostable or more, more biodegradable, it is important to look at every step in the manufacturing process. And she was trying to promote transitioning from a sort of linear manufacturing mindset where, you know, when we originally came up with plastic, it was we create a product and then the product gets thrown away to a sort of cyclical mindset where you want to create new products and alternatives to plastic where before you even start using the product or mass producing it for you know human use we want to know and have characterized very well how that product is going to be broken down by the environment and that that product that process will be rapid that it won't produce any uh unwanted uh contaminants like a lot of uh, alternatives to plastics are great, like biofibers, but they can be coated in, say, flame retardants, which makes sense intuitively because we don't want, you know, everything to catch on fire. But uh, some flame retardant chemicals then get into the environment, and that is a huge, uh, you know, public health issue uh, these days. And so it's important when we're looking into the um, al alternatives to plastic and alternatives to any product that we don't uh, want to use anymore and we want to transition out of. Uh, that we consider the full pathway of what's going to happen to that product um, and that we're sure that, and it's it's difficult to do, but it's so much easier to prevent than it is to, uh, after the fact, try to deal with that problem. You, you illustrated an important point for youth today, and that is you know, one thing to be learning is to learn to think in terms of systems, to think in terms of the whole and not just the narrow specialties, not get stuck in, in a, one particular silo. And so I think an important skill for all young people today is to have that, that broader view, whether it be replacing something, something else, what, where does it fit into the whole cycle of things? When you're looking at the social impacts, if you're phasing out an industry, how do you, how do you find you know, other employment for the people who work in that industry to leave no one behind? I think we've, you've raised several different issues this evening all of which require that kind of systems thinking, which is, is what inherent in the Baha'i faith. I mean, the Baha'i approach to progressive revelation is all about systems. And that, you know, the teachings are about building you know, a unified world society that's all about systems. So it's, it's a kind of thinking that needs to be part of every young person's vocabulary today um, as they go forward. And then I think we've had a number of good examples of that this evening already. Thank you.